Hello, this is Rick Pina, and in this video, I am going to do my best to explain to you how faith works in a way that anyone can understand. So I was talking to some young people recently, some millennials, and uh, we were talking about church and the Bible and faith and that type of thing. And what they were sharing with me was that, you know, a lot of times what they hear from pastors comes across what they said, you know, is the word churchy, right? So it comes across churchy and and sometimes we may use church jargon that, that they don't understand or whatever. And they're like, you know, I mean, I'm not opposed to understanding this thing, but could you really just explain it to me? So in this video, I'm just going to take a conversational approach to faith. Like you and I say we're having a conversation and you really do want to understand how faith works and, you know, uh, what it really means to walk and live by faith and that type of thing. And without using a bunch of scripture and without sounding churchy, I'm just going to try to share that with you and explain it in a way uh, that hopefully you can apply because you will never maximize something you do not understand And the goal is for you to get an understanding, right? So for you to actually have a functional understanding of faith so that you can apply it to your life so that you can, in turn, as a result, be the man or the woman that God has called you to be. I'm going to deal with three questions in this video. What is faith? That's the most basic question, right? Um, Are there types of faith or like levels of faith? I'll deal with that. And then lastly, this is one I was asked to explain. What does it mean? Like when pastors say, faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith begins where the will of God is known. What does that mean? I'm going to answer those three questions today. (music) Understanding faith is absolutely critical. Um, If you are Christian, if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and the Bible is your book, right? and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, and you're trying to walk and live by faith and understand this thing, then it is critical that you do get an understanding because everything that we do as a believer, we're supposed to do it by faith. So everything God does for us, God does it by grace. Grace means it's unearned. It is unmerited. In most cases, it's undeserved. You don't. God doesn't bless you because you're good. Actually, God blesses you because God is good, because he wants to. But from a faith perspective, Everything we are supposed to do in response to God, we're supposed to do it by faith. And without giving you a bunch of scriptures, I'll just tell you that the Bible does say, you know what? It's impossible to please God without faith. Not possible, right? So if it's impossible to please God without faith, if when we come to God for salvation, we're supposed to do it by faith. So we come, we have to please him by faith. And then what we're saved by faith. And then the Bible says we're supposed to walk by faith. We're supposed to live by faith and pray by faith, and fight the good fight of faith, and overcome the world by faith. And so if if we're supposed to be doing all of these things by faith, then yeah, we do need an understanding of it so that we can apply it, and that's what we'll deal with today. So the first question is the most basic question, what is faith? What is faith, Rick? I mean, like, like how do you explain faith? Well, you know, if I had my preacher hat on, I would I would take you to Hebrews 11 and 1, you know, and, but I'm just going to try to explain it in a way that is easy to understand. So Hebrews 11 and 1 does kind of tell us that faith is, is about being sure. Faith is about being certain uh, that what God said he was going to do, he would do, uh, that he is going to do this. And then faith is about having this level of assurance and certainty. Guess what? without any sense realm evidence, right? Without any sense realm evidence to support it. What do you mean by that? Let me explain that. So so we have a body, right? So the real you, I don't know if you know this, but the real you is a spirit. Like the real me is a spirit. And there's three parts of us, just like there's three parts of God. God is father, son, spirit, and we are spirit, soul, body. So we are a spirit. 
Our spirit possesses a soul. A soul is our, like our mind, our emotions, and our will, our thinker, and our feeler, and our chooser, like the way we think, the way we emote, and the way we make decisions. That's the soul part of us. And then our spirit and our soul live in a body for now, like this body, right? And so this body is like an earth suit. This body is how we communicate with this planet. And we communicate with this planet through five physical senses. But the real you is a spirit and the real you is going to live forever in one or two places. <laughs> and so I make it very clear um, that, you know, Jesus died for us. And if we're born again, if we accept Jesus as Lord, then we're going to spend eternity in heaven. And, and, and I want to make sure that you understand that. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat that in any way. But going back to uh, the faith thing is that so now this body communicates with this planet through our five physical senses. And when God speaks to us, God is not communicating through senses. God is communicating through spirit because God is a spirit. So since God is a spirit and he talks to us spirit to spirit and not through our senses, then when he says something, we have to be sure. Faith is being sure. Faith is being certain of what he said and what he promised and what he's going to do. Guess what? Without any sense realm evidence to support it. So you don't have any email documentation. You don't have any paperwork. You don't have something you can see in most cases or touch or validate. Because when you can validate it with your senses, you know what you say? Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> but when you can't validate it with your senses, you go, uh, no, that doesn't make sense. And God is not sensual. He is spiritual. So oftentimes God will say something to you that is nonsensical. God will say something to you that doesn't make sense at all. And, and, and people come to me and go, well, uh, I don't know. Especially I was talking to a millennial the other day. It was like, you know, he's trying to like ex explain this to me, explain that to me. Well, wait a minute. What about this? And let's go back to hi the historical records of this and the historical records of that. And at the end of the day, I mean, we got to the point of the conversation was like, look, man, just to be clear, I can't prove God. Like I'm not here like to build the case for God. If I could explain God, if I could explain him away, then I would be God's God. There are some things in God that are unexplainable. There are some things in God that are not reasonable, right? That, that, that are nonsensical. God will lead you to do things that don't make sense. And this is faith. And this is at its most basic form. You have to understand that faith is believing God, believing in a God that you cannot see, and believing that this God that you cannot see will show up in your life in ways that you can see and that you are sure and that you are certain and that you are so sure and that you are so certain about it that you actually respond. So you, res you respond. How do you respond? Faith is something you say, right? Faith is something you do or faith is a seed that you sow, like a fi financial decision that you make, all based on what you believe God revealed to you, even though you can't validate it with your senses. That is faith. Faith is not about you trying to convince God, like, what? To, oh, God, give me this. My name is Jimmy. Give me, give me, give me, right? No, no. Faith is not about you trying to convince God. Faith is what happens when God convinces you, when you are like, what the Bible says, fully persuaded, when you are so convinced that God talked to you about this business or about this college or about this relationship, about this marriage, that you are so convinced of what God said, that you are now making decisions. You are saying stuff and doing stuff and making financial decisions, writing checks and sowing stuff, all based on what God revealed to you. That is faith. You are living by faith because you are living in response to what you believe God said. This is this is what it means to live by faith. So let, let me let me break it down a little bit further before I close out this first question. So I like to explain the difference between like time and eternity or earth and heaven when I'm talking about this point. So God is in eternity. Let me explain what I mean. So we are in time. You and I, we live in time, right? So we're living our lives out within the confines of the continuum of time because we live in time. And, and, and God is not limited by time. We're limited by time, but God is not. And so God is not limited by time or space, right? God is in every space at the same time. I can't give you a grid coordinate where God is because there is no grid coordinate where he is not. <laughs> he is in every time, in every space at the same time. And guess what? He's in every time at the same time. He's outside of time. God is so, I know it's hard to understand that because we are finite, right? But God is eternal. So he's outside of time. He's not limited by time because time is something he created and he cannot be limited by something that he created. So we are in time and God is not. 
Well, Rick, what does that have to do with faith? Oh, it actually has a lot to do with faith. Let me explain. So we're in time and God is not. God is outside of time. God is in eternity and we're in time. So when God speaks to us, here's the confusing part. When God speaks to us, he always speaks to us from a position of what I call the eternal now, right? So because he's in eternity and time is not an issue for him, so for him is always now, right? So when God, if God does speak to you and he does, so when God reveals something to you about something that is future to you, for him is, is, is past, like, because he sees it already. Even if it's something that may not happen in your life for 25 years, when he sees it, he sees it like it's now. So when God says it to you, to him is always now, even though for you, it may not happen for, for years or months or weeks, you know? And so God is talking to us and, and he's talking to us from the perspective of eternity and we're in time. So faith is the ability to like peer into eternity when God gives you a glimpse of something that's going to happen in your future. Faith is like your ability to receive that. And God, how does God do that? Well, he can do it a bunch of ways. He can give you a dream while you're sleeping. He can give you an open vision while you're awake. He can speak to you in your heart while you're driving. He can speak to you while you're reading the word of God. He can talk to you at work. I mean, he could talk to you while you're, you're on the train. He can send somebody else to talk to you if you're not listening. I mean, so he has a lot of ways to talk to you. But when he reveals something to you about your future, and although it sounds like now, it may not happen for a long time. And so faith is now believing that. Faith is you living in time, peering into eternity, and then coming back from that moment and then making decisions now. Faith is something you say, from something you do, a seed you sow. Making decisions now that are going to line up with what you believe God revealed to you about your future so that you are making decisions now that are taking you incrementally closer to what God said. That is the life of faith. And it's the same way with earth and heaven. So God is in heaven. He reveals things from the heavenly realm and we're living in the earth. And so faith is like your ability to peer from the earth into heaven and then to come back from that moment. And you're like, wow, God showed me something. And I like, you know, I saw myself speaking to people or I saw myself teaching, uh, you know, a, a, a kindergarten class or I saw myself running my own business or I saw my, oh, wow, I saw my restaurant and it had my name on it or whatever. And you come back from that moment, you come back from that glimpse. And now faith is your ability to believe, to be so sure, to be so certain of what that was, that you are now going to make decisions in your present day based on what God revealed to you about your tomorrow. That is faith. So the next question is, hey, Rick, are there types of faith? Are there like levels of faith? The answer to that is yes. And so let me explain. And I'm not saying that this is a comprehensive video or that this is a comprehensive list, right? I can't address everything in just a few minutes, but I'm going to give you a few examples of like types of faith or levels of faith. So the first one I'll deal with is faith in the works, faith in the works. This is faith in what you can see. And, you know, I already told you that that living by faith is not by like your five physical senses, but the most basic form of faith is when somebody expresses faith because they saw something. Right. So they, they're like, oh, I saw something. And because I saw it with my own eyes. Now, I guess it's, it's true. Right. Like, you know, what I'm saying like, for example, uh, if somebody doesn't believe in miracles, uh, but you know, they see a miracle. They see somebody walk out of a wheelchair that couldn't walk out, you know, of a wheelchair before. Or one time I was, uh, a friend of mine came to visit our church and there was a lady that came up to, to the altar for prayer and um, she had an accident, something like, you know, 17, 20 years earlier or something. And she couldn't hear out of one of her ears. And I was talking to her. She was like, no, you got to talk out of this ear because I can't hear out of this ear. And I was like, what do you mean? And she told me about the accident or whatever. And so I laid hands on her and, um, and I just prayed, you know, the prayer of faith. And, and, you know, I don't have healing. God does. And, and, but the, the, the healing power of God was manifested. And then she heard like a pop out of that ear. And, um, and she was like, oh my gosh, she started crying and screaming. And then, you know, we tested it and she could hear out of that ear. And then she went to the doctor and the doctor validated that she could hear out of that ear. And so after 17 or 20 years or whatever it was, she was healed. And then my friend who saw that, you know, really wasn't convinced about God's healing before. But once 
he saw that, he was like, oh yeah, now I know that God can heal. That's the most basic form of faith because you're only believing because you saw it, right? So I'll give you an example of that from scripture without getting too churchy, right? So um, so Jesus, we know that Jesus died on a cross and, and after three nights and three days, he rose from the dead. And so one time he, after he rose from the dead, he revealed himself to a, a few of the disciples. And so he's walking along and the disciples saw him. They were like, oh my God, we see the resurrected Jesus. And so those guys go back to the rest of the disciples and were like, yo, dude, we saw Jesus. And one of the disciples, Thomas, and this is why we call him Doubting Thomas, or some people call him Doubt, Doubting Thomas. Um, they, Thomas was like, well, you know what? I wasn't there. I didn't see it. And um, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to believe that. And so Thomas said, unless I see Jesus with my own eyes, and unless I touch the hole in his hand, and unless I put my hand in the hole in his side, I will not believe. And, you know, what I love about God is that he meets us where we are. Like, you know, first of all, Thomas was wrong for that. But either way, God was like, okay, cool. That's what you need. And God will meet us at our level. And so Jesus, a few days later, those same guys were in a room praying. And Jesus, like the movie, The Matrix, Jesus walked through the wall, right? So he's like, Jesus, bad dude now. Jesus walks through the wall like The Matrix. And he says, peace be unto you, right? I mean, so he's like, bam, Jesus, oh! They're like, oh my God. And so in that moment, while the disciples are going crazy, Jesus is like, Thomas, come here. And Thomas is like, uh, okay, yeah, yes, Jesus. He was like, come here. I want you to take your hand and put it right here. I heard what you said. So, like, huh, huh? And he's like, now take your hand, put it in the hole in my side. Huh, okay. And then Thomas said, okay, I believe, I believe. And then Jesus is like, yeah, you believe because you see. But you know what? More blessed are those who believe without seeing. So, so yeah, like the most basic form of faith, the most basic level of faith is believing in what you see, is believing the works. You got it? All right, now let's go to the next one. So level two or type two is not believing the works, but believing the word. So the first one was believing what you see. This one is believing what you read. So we have the word of God. So the Bible, the 66 books of the Bible, the word of God is the will of God on paper. People say, well, I want to know the will of God. Well, why don't you read the word of God? The word of God is the will of God on paper. And so, so you start reading the word, reading the Bible, 66 books of the Bible. And if you exercise faith in what you read, right, that is a form of faith. And I would tell you that I think that most people think that, like, that's what they think of. When, when I say, hey, you know, when they say I'm standing in faith, they're like tying it to a scripture or something. They're like, so they take the scripture and they tape it to their mirror and they look at it every day and they decree it and declare it. And I'm not making fun of this. I do this too. But but I'm saying like, that's still like, I still think that this is a, a basic form of faith. But believing in what, what God said in his word, right? Past tense, that that is faith. But if you look at biblical evidence of the people that live by faith in the Bible, they didn't live like that, right? So let me go to the next one. So the next one, the next type or level of faith would be um, not just, so the first one was I'm believing the works, right? The second one is I'm believing the word. So the first one is I'm believing what I see. I'm believing what I read. The third one is believing what you hear. So now the third one is faith in a direct word. When God actually like speaks to you directly. And I told you that he has a, a bunch of ways that he can talk to you. But if God talks to you like directly and gives you a word or a promise or a dream or a vision or whatever, he, he spoke to you and now you got it. Now, this is actually how most people in the Bible that we call, if you read Hebrews 11 and 1, which is like the hall of fame for faith or the hall of faith, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, I'm sorry, the whole chapter is like the hall of fame for people who live by faith. And if you live, if you read that, this is actually the type of faith that they, that they had. And this is the type of faith that Jesus had. So Jesus got up every morning and you know what he didn't say? He never said to his disciples, hey, guys, come here. And he was like, yeah, yes, Lord. You know what we're going to do today, guys? We're going to stand on Isaiah 1 and 17, you know? We're, you know what we're going to do today, guys? What's that, Lord? We're going to release our faith for Psalms 1 to happen in our life. No. He never said, well, I'm standing on Leviticus. <laughs> he never said, I'm going to release my faith for Obadiah. You know, none of that. Jesus said, I only say those things I hear my father say. I only do those things I see my father do. 
I'm walking by faith because God is talking to me every day. Jesus, he went off by himself every morning. He would pray and then he would get a download from heaven. He would get his instructions and come back and be like, and they'd be like, all right, hey, Jesus, what are we doing today? All right, we're going to this town. We're going this way. I must needs go through Samaria. I got to do this. Go into this town. There's a donkey. Pick him up and bring him to me. And he got all of that because he was getting his orders from headquarters. He was getting instructions from heaven and he lived by faith in those instructions. This is actually how we're supposed to live. I think when people, going back to like the level two thing with the, with the written word, I think people confuse that because um, if you look at the, the giants of the faith, like Abraham, well, you know, oh man, Abraham waited on God and believed God for 25 years for that boy, right? Or if you think of uh, Joseph waited 20 years for the promise to come to pass, or David waited over 13 years to become the king, or like, you know, we see all these things in scriptures and all these people that had to wait, and, and Caleb waited 45 years for his mountain and all of that stuff. And none of those people believe God for a scripture. None of them. None of them were like saying, well, this is the scripture that I'm standing on. In most cases, these people didn't have the Bible. So they were actually standing on this type of faith is faith in something that God speaks to you. When God speaks to you, going back to that glimpse so that God gives you that, now you have something to, to exercise your faith in. You got it? So faith in what you see, faith in what you read, faith in what you hear. And then the fourth level that I'll deal with um, in this question is just faith in God, like faith in the person of God. In, in, in the Bible, Jesus had this in incident with the, with the disciples where he spoke to a fig tree and the fig tree dried up and they were amazed that the tree dried up and, and he walked away like it was already done. And the next day it actually happened and they were blown away and all of that. And in that moment, he said, listen, you guys got to have faith in God. Like at the end of the day, you got to, he spoke to this tree because he was led to speak to the tree and the tree didn't move. But he walked away like it was already done because his confidence was in God. Like you got to have confidence in God. Paul said that you got to be confident in this very thing, that he, God, who has begun a good work in you, you know what? He's more than capable of performing it, of finishing that work. God, God is going to finish what he started in your life. And so if he gave you a dream, if he gave you a vision and it's taken a long time, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come to pass. So this last form that I'll talk about in the second question is just having faith in God, like having faith in the person of God, not faith in what you see, not faith in what you read, not faith in what you heard. Watch this. Even if I haven't seen anything yet, let's say you get a, a letter in the mail that you didn't want, you didn't expect, or you get that email that you were dreading, or you get the, a bad report from the doctor or from the bank or from a lawyer or whatever, a judge, you get that. Now, before you can have faith in what you see because you haven't seen nothing yet. Before you can have faith in what you read because you haven't gone to any scriptures yet. Before you can have faith in what God said because God hasn't spoken yet. In that moment, you know what? You can still have faith in God. Like, you know what? I have faith in God. So maybe, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't read it yet. I haven't heard it yet. It doesn't matter. I have faith in God. I've been through too much. I, God, is, God didn't bring me all of this way to fail. I've walked with God long enough to know that I'm going to get through this and my God is going to see me through this. So I have faith in God. And like, you know what? I just, I have faith. Well, what do you mean? What, what does that mean? Do you know what, 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 what God is going to do? No, I don't know what, it's, what God is going to do. He hasn't spoken yet. Well, do you, do you stop asking me questions? All I can do is tell you this. I have faith in God. And I know that in the end, I don't know what he's going to do because he hasn't told me yet, but I do know that it's going to be good. And I know that this is not going to destroy me. And I know that some way, somehow this is going to work out in my favor and I'm going to get over this and I'm going to get past this. You know why? Because I have faith in God. So I dealt with uh, having faith in the works, having faith in the word, having faith in a direct word, and then just having faith in the person. I have faith in God. Okay, the last question, last question. What does it mean, Rick, when pastors say, faith begins where the will of God is known? Like, you know, that just kind of sounds churchy and I don't understand it. Okay, well, let me let me help you understand. Remember when I was talking to you about the whole eternity thing? And so God is in eternity and we're in time. And so there are scriptures that actually tell us that God made plans for us before the world began, that we are predestined, like pre meaning before, destined or destination, meaning the end, right? So, so before we got started, God 
we got started with God's end in mind, right? So God established the end from the beginning. And before we were even born, God made plans for us. And so this thing is already mapped out, is laid out. That the Bible actually says that God takes things from eternity and he puts it in our heart and in our mind so that we will never be satisfied in, until we become what we saw, right? What he revealed. The, the Bible actually says that everything that is now has already been and everything that will be has already been. And God is looking for history or his story to repeat itself in our life. So when God looks at you, he's actually looking for what he already planned, right? So let me, and, and so, so faith has to begin there. If God already made plans for you, let me, let me just explain it as easy as I can. If God already made plans for you before you were born, and he did, then your life can't be about what you want. Your life can't be about your selfish desires. James explained it. He's like, you know, the reason why you don't have is because you don't ask. But then he was like, well, no, I just can't say that because then people are going to ask for whatever they want. James was like, okay, well, let me explain it another further. He goes, but then you ask and you don't get it because you're asking for what you want. You're asking for selfish desires and you didn't ask for what God wanted for you. <laughs> and so really, John was like, this is the confidence that we have that when, whenever we ask for anything that is actually in accordance with his will. So when we ask for something that he wants us to have, when we ask for something that's already part of the plan, when we ask for something that's already part of what he already predestined, right? Then yeah, then we, we can have it. We can have confidence that we're going to have it. And even then it's going to happen over the process of time. So faith has to begin there. Faith can't begin where you're trying to make it up. Faith has to begin in his heart. Faith has to begin where it's something that's already been done, already established, is already finished, right? So let me, let me explain what I mean in a way maybe that, that you can understand. I'll give you this last little example. Uh, and, and then I would say that what I'm about to say uh, I, I dealt with four like types or levels of faith. I didn't deal with this one. I, I call this one level five is like the, the highest form of faith. Faith is in, the highest form of faith is entering into God's rest where you are so convinced going back to being sure and certain you're so convinced you're so sure you're so certain that you enter into rest. Like for you, it's already done. Let me explain what I mean. So I'll give you an example that I think most people can understand. I was in the, I served in the, the United States army for 25 years and my wife served in the United States Army for 21 years. So combined, we have 46 years of service. And within those 46 years, we went, we got promoted a bunch of times. And so we, we went through a bunch of promotions and we know how the promotion kind of system worked. And, and I'll give you, I'll use the promotion system of the United States Army as an example of what I'm talking about. And so um, let's say, for example, you're getting ready for a promotion board. And um, I still know a lot of people in the Army. So some people may be watching this that are still in the Army. So you know what I'm talking about. So you're getting ready for a promotion board. And when you're getting ready for the promotion board, you have to make sure that your packet is, is ready. Your files are ready, right? So maybe you need a new photo or maybe you need to update your records. And you, at that point, you're trying to dot every I, cross every T, make sure that everything is ready so that you've done your part and you, your files are ready and, and they're the best version of you and, and you let it go. And, and then, you know, you're, you're praying, you know, that the Bible says that promotion comes from the Lord. And so, so now you let it go. And so you're waiting. And at that point, you, you don't know if you got promoted yet. You're like, you don't know if you're going to get promoted. Uh, but let's say, for example, the results come out. And when the results come out, let's say, for example, my wife retired as a major. Let's say she was a captain at the time. And the, and the major list came out and the results came out and her name is on the list. So she's been selected. So now she's been selected for a major. And let's say that she's been selected and she has a number, a sequence number, and then that number means that she's probably probably going to actually pin on the rank nine months from now, right? But now she's already selected. So now it's decided. So now it's done. Like, it's decided. So since the decision is already made and she, know that, she knows that it's past tense, like it's already done, so she's still walking around with the rank of a captain, but she already knows that she's been selected for promotion to major, and it's only a matter of time before she's able to pin on the rank. So she's not worrying about it. She's not concerned about it. She can enter into rest concerning it. She's not trying to make anything happen anymore. She's not trying to update records. It's already done. Like, the decision has been made. Now, you're like, well, Rick, what does that have to do with faith? Actually, it has a lot to do with it. Because when God shows you something, God is not a man that he can lie. Like, he is incapable of lying. So if God shows you something and it's future to you, right, 
it's and it's passed to him, that means it's ha- it happened already. Like it's already done. Now it's only a matter of time. So you can stop worrying about it. Like like stop concerning yourself with it. It's been decided. Like it's over. God decided. He showed it to you. It's yours. You got the glimpse of it. You believe it. Now you're like, okay, well, whatever I need to do, like I, I can say stuff or do stuff or sow stuff or make financial decisions that, that are going to take me down that path. But never in your mind should you question it anymore. Now you can enter into rest concerning it because it's already done. Like the will of God has been known. The will of God has been revealed. And if God shows you that that's it, like that's it. He gave you the picture of you being healthy on the the other side of this sickness. So he gave you the picture of this business being successful. Now, what maybe God didn't show you was all the stuff that you were going to have to go through in order to get healthy or all the stuff that you were going to have to go through in order for your business to succeed. God is not going to give you all the details. I like to say, because if he did, you would run the other way because you know, God will give you the glimpse and he doesn't show you all the hell that you have to go through <laughs> between here and there. But the point is that it's already done. So faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith has to begin where God already showed it to you. Faith has to begin with God. Faith can't be about you trying to get God to put a yes on your plans. Faith is all about God trying to get you to put a yes on his plans. Faith is about God. Faith begins in his heart. This is this is faith. Faith is not about you trying to tell God what to do. That would be like the tail wagging the dog. Faith is God speaking to you. Faith is God revealing it to you. Faith is you submitting and surrendering surrendering yourself to the will of God. Faith is, uh, is about you making an alignment with your divine assignment. Faith is about you saying yes to God. Finally, faith is not about you trying to convince God. I already told you, faith is what happens when God convinces you. When you are so convinced, when you are so persuaded that what God said to you about your marriage or about your children, about your finances, about your career, about your business, about your health, you are so convinced of what God said and you are convinced and you are fully persuaded that now it's done, it's past tense, it's already been decided. You're not concerned about it. You're not worrying about it. You know that it's just a matter of time. It might take a long time, but you are not moved. This is understanding faith. And listen, of course, I can't cover everything in one video, But I hope that just by me answering these three questions, it helped you get a better understanding of what it means to walk and to live by faith, because this is actually a really important topic. Because you and I, if you know Jesus, like I know Jesus, then we are the just. And the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. I love you and God loves you more. I thank you for watching this video. Thank you for giving me your time and attention. I'm going to ask you to subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to the channel, hit like on the video, and leave me some comments in the chat. Listen, I appreciate you, uh, and I pray that, that you continue to grow, that you continue to develop, that you discover who it is that God has called you to be. Your destiny, your destiny cannot be decided. You can't decide it. You know why? Because God already decided before the world began. So your, your job is to find it, your job is to follow it, and your job is to finish it before you die. And I pray that you do. God bless you.